I've got my coffee here for this one because I'm going to be answering a ton of questions and addressing a bunch of concerns from one of my most recent videos, uh, which actually revealed the fact that yes, indeed, we will be getting a larger studio space for the Lego room. And it's going to be epic. So today I actually want to say, I want to start by saying thank you so much for all of the positive comments in the last video. I highly appreciate it. And there were a ton of questions that were asked in the comment section below as well. So I've actually got a, a list of them here. They're split into a few different sections. Uh, so I've got art and signage. Uh, what's going to happen to this basement here? What my plan is for adding clouds around the backdrop of the new city. Uh, will the new studio be open to the public? What do I have in mind for security and also insurance? That was a big uh, concern of a lot of people there. Uh, what's going to happen with the shelving area and just a few concerns in regards to that. Also uh, a lot of people were questioning the table layout that I came up with uh, in that uh, video uh, in regards to the shape of it, also the size of it, and the fact that it should be on wheels. And then there's also some more questions in regards to the workspace that I plan to put on the mezzanine above the Lego City. And then there's some other miscellaneous questions as well. So that sort of breaks down the different categories of questions that we're going to be answering in this video. And of course, after we're done answering all of those questions, or after I'm done answering them, if you have more questions for me in regards to the new space, make sure you put them down below in the comment section. I will do my best to answer them in a future video. But just keep in mind that I'm going to be addressing all of those things here today. So try not to ask questions that sort of overlap with that because of course once again I'm going to be addressing all of this stuff here today. Why don't we start with this one here it says uh, just a suggestion to save the knees put down some interlocking foam flooring under the tables your knees will be happier. I agree with that. I will definitely be doing something like that as long as it doesn't interfere too much with the robotic vacuum cleaners that I have going around to help deal with the dust. How much is it going to cost to heat this huge place? It's a good question. I guess I'll find out. Uh, some of the renovations that I have to do prior to moving in is upgrading the furnace. I want to give it a high efficiency furnace. That has to happen. That will help reduce the heat bill. And also I'm going to be changing it from the overhead unit, which is like a, a blowing overhead unit for the back warehouse bay. I'm going to be actually changing that out because that thing looks archaic up there. And I'm actually going to be switching it for radiant heating because it's going to be more efficient. It's also going to provide a more consistent heat. And also there's not going to be the moving air effect. So it's actually going to help reduce the dust as well. Luckily we're not moving until March. So it's going to start warming up in the months of March. Um, uh, April, May, June, July, then I might have to worry about air conditioning. How hot is it going to be in there? It's another concern I have. I guess we'll find out when we get there, you know? Yeah, interesting. But I hope that uh, we can make good content and maybe get some sponsors. And with the support of you and, and the channel and the viewership, I'm hoping that we can make it sustainable. That's my goal. Uh, I'm a huge fan of taking risks and I don't want to live my life without taking risks and this is the next the next risk that me and Mrs. Brixie are willing to take acquiring this massive studio space because it's truly our dream so I'm not too worried about the expense well I am of course but I'm just taking measures to sort of counteract that expense I hope I'm excited though should be interesting I'll let you know how much the heat bill is once we get in there. <laughs> so this next question here is asking me about the tables and they're asking me to take this layout, like the size of this table layout and plop it into that Excel like blueprint that I made of the new table layouts. So let's have a look at that. So if you haven't seen this yet, this is essentially the warehouse right here. Well, two thirds of the warehouse because this is 30 by 40, but the warehouse is actually 30 by 60, that's feet. This is the current layout right here and this is the layout that's going to be in the warehouse and that's the perimeter walking around it. If I take this 
and I grab it and plop it there, it sort of gives you a good visual of how big the current layout is compared to the new layout. But that's like the entire current layout. It doesn't include, it doesn't include the little uh, cutouts that I have for accessibility. So you can see you can essentially fit like three of them in the new layout, just over three. So yeah, it is substantially bigger, like three times the space. Think about how much stuff is in my Lego city right now. Three times the space, but like, just think about how much stuff is in my Lego city right now. It's huge. So three times the space is a lot. And once again, there's still 20 more feet of space right here. This is only two thirds of the bay. And to address the other points of that question, I plan on building the table is pretty much the exact same way as this. However, I'm probably not going to use two by sixes because those are expenses, expensive and rather large. I just need to use two by fours, but I'll probably do the pretty much the exact same thing just in a larger scale. I've already got a really good idea of how I'm going to do that. I don't want to get into the exact construction of it. I'll do that when we're actually in there and we're actually playing around with the table sizes and everything because things might change when we get in there. So I'm not going to make an exact blueprints or an exact construction plan right now. Uh, what I did the other day was just a brief overview of it. And once we actually get in there and I start constructing these tables and all the, uh, the bench work for the tables, I'll definitely go over it with a fine tooth comb. Fine tooth comb. Yeah, there we go. So what I've decided to do is just answer some of the miscellaneous questions first, and then we're going to hop into those topics. Uh, Fired Rake asks, why not get a drone and fly it over the LEGO City? I've got a drone. I've also got a 360 camera with a huge selfie stick, and I'm probably going to get a bigger selfie stick. I like the 360 camera because it can give you the same drone effect when you use a 20-foot selfie pole but it doesn't create the wind that can blow over all your minifigures and sort of destroy your city. So I'll probably just be using my 360 camera to get the same drone effect. But I do have a, a DJI drone and maybe I'll attempt to fly it in there. I did that in my old Lego room actually. There is a Lego city flyover video here on the channel. If you search my channel and you search drone, you'll see that I did do that once upon a time in the old house. Miguel is essentially asking, how are all the sets going to be moved? I did answer that in one of my most recent Ask Brixie episodes, I believe, but the short version of it, very carefully in a big truck. It's not a far distance away, so I should be able to move them quite safely, and I might use saran wrap or big pallet wrap in some cases, and just perfect fit boxes, but just very carefully, really. Michael Nelson is asking me if I think I will regret getting rid of any of the sets that I got rid of in the past because I have more space to display them now. No, because the sets that I got rid of, I wasn't overly attached to. So, no, I don't think so. So I want to answer two questions that were asked in regards to me opening the studio to the public. There's a couple concerns about that uh, in regards to the 40-inch uh, walking space that I was discussing because I was going to have a perimeter layout with 40 inches going around the perimeter. And uh, the gentleman here says, uh, well, that might not be enough for wheelchairs. It's not going to be open to the public. No, unfortunately not. It's just, I just don't know how to regulate that. I've discussed that in a recent video as well. It Unfortunately, it's just not going to be open to the public. I just, once again, don't know how to regulate it. Don't know if I have the time to regulate it. And it's a bigger security risk. Now, in regards to the 40 inch walkways, I just want to showcase how big 40 inches is. This is how wide 40 inches is. Like it's, it's quite wide, but if it's not wide enough, I can just shorten the table by six inches or eight inches to make it four feet. But 40 inches is, is very, very wide. The uh, walking space that we have right now is 27 inches. So 27 inches there, we're going to 40. Should be more than enough space to walk around the city. I, I don't think, I don't foresee that being a problem. So there were five people that were concerned about security and insurance and flooding and pretty much the devil's advocate. Um, yeah, of course, uh, there's going to be security system, cameras, 
Camera's inside, camera's outside, and of course I have a $250,000 insurance policy right now, which more than covers my collection, and everything is pretty much logged. But yeah, I've got a really good insurance uh, policy that cost me, I think it's, I can't remember what it is, what is it? Uh, I think close to six grand a year. I pay $6,000 a year for insurance. Yeah. Uh, it's actually not the contents of the Lego that costs a lot of money to insure. It's my liability policy that I have in place for the channel. But yeah, I have a really good insurance policy and I have a really good security system with cameras in this studio. And also I will have an even better one at that studio because I'm upping my insurance and upping my security like 100,000%. And that's one of the reasons why I don't want to open it to the public is because I don't trust the, grapes on, the grapevine 100%. But I'm not worried because I'm going to have the proper systems in place. And I've always thought of it this way. What's the difference between me having a Lego studio full of Lego? What's the difference between that and somebody having a car lot full of cars? or a shopping mall full of jewelry, or anything really, a Lego store full of Lego. What's, what's the difference? Uh, as long as you have the right systems in place, then you're fine. And of course, those systems will be in place. And of course, it would suck if the building burnt down or if my collection got stolen. Like, not, of course, that would suck. But like, what am I going to do? What, like, what am I going to do? I, I can have the right system set up and just hope that it doesn't happen and do everything that I can to minimize that risk. But what am I going to do? Not, not do like, not chase my dream? Just thinking that that might happen? That's just not an option. Like, I just need to proceed and move forward with my dream without thinking about that, without thinking that that's gonna happen constantly. I, I don't foresee that happening. And another thing too about my collection is how lucrative is it? It's all built. Everything's built. And like, it's not like you can go in there and you can grab a hundred sealed sets and flip these sealed sets quickly. If you break in and the alarm's going off and the authorities are on their way or authorities are notified and I'm notified on my phone, how much can you get away with in the time that you have before the authorities are there? And when you do, you're, you're doing it in a rushed way. You're going to destroy it all anyway. So how much lucrative value does it have compared to, like I mentioned, a leg, an actual Lego store or a Walmart or a... Uh, robbing a bank or w whatever you might like how much lucrative value is it going to have when you're hucking all this lego into the back of a truck or something and destroying it and then where are you going to sell it in mass to get your value out of it like I, it, it does happen there's no question that it does happen but I don't want to overthink it to the point where I'm like that's all I think about like I, I'm just going to make sure I have the right systems in place so that if it does happen, it's insured, it's secured, the authorities are on their way, and if they get away with 300 sets, it's crappy, like it sucks, like that sucks, but like I'm not gonna live a scared life because of that. I'm not going to not chase my dream because of the fact that that could happen. I'm not gonna like shrivel up and curl into a little ball and play dead you know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to continue proceeding with what I want to do and what what I would like to do in the future. There's there's no sense in... It's always on your mind, but there's no sense on dwelling on it. That's all I'm trying to say. So I was talking about the shelving area and how it would be subdivided into three different rooms. Uh, Jordan Sanderson says, Jordan, you should consider knocking down some of the walls under the loft to make one grand room. Having all the sets together would present more epic instead of having them sep separate in separate rooms. I do agree with that. Uh, it's really going to depend on if those walls are load-bearing or not. 
And I am not the guy to ask about that. I can talk to a professional about it, but I don't know if I'm the guy to call that shot. Really depends on if they're load bearing. If they're load bearing, then I can't do that. Well, that's just more expensive to do. You gotta put like beams in. I'm sure there's beams that are supporting it up top there, but I'd, I'd have to talk to, uh, I'd have to talk to my handyman or, or some sort of engineer that could determine whether or not those rooms are load bearing. And I think it actually would be pretty cool though to have it isolated. I think it'd be cool to have Star Wars all in a room. I think it'd be neat to have a Star Wars room and then sort of everything else from there. I, I don't really know, like I mentioned when I made the first video talking about the shelving room and talking about everything, I don't really know what's going to happen with that because I've got shelving everywhere. I've got track shelving. I've got Billy cabinets. I've got pack unit, packs units. I've got Besta cabinets. I've got all sorts of cabinets everywhere. So I don't really know what the shelving is going to be like until I get in there and I start moving these shelves around. Maybe some of the walls have to be removed. I don't know. Oh, I'll cross that bridge and I get there as well. And then Plague Watt says, consider in the downstairs office floors where you're planning on putting the shelving, you also want to reserve some space for an entryway. You do not want the door open and have a chilly Canadian winter. I'm, I'm not worried about the cold air coming in. That's just, yeah, I'm not worried about that. <laughs> that's just, that's why we have furnaces. You open the door, you get inside, you close the door. The furnace heats it back up again. That's how we operate here in Canada. Yeah, so no like separate framed entryway. Although it would be nice a place to hang your coat and put your boots and have like a little mud room of sorts when you come in. But I don't think I'm gonna do that because it takes away from shelving space, right? So these next three questions involve the wall space around the Lego city. So I was talking about doing the clouds, which I'll discuss in one moment. And then above the clouds, I was gonna do the art sets. It's just my plan because I didn't want to take up valuable art uh, wall space elsewhere. And I figured those like, that space is going to be empty anyway, so it'd be cool to hang art around there. Uh, so there's some concerns about that. And then uh, some people are asking about a big Brixy logo. Maybe I should put a big Brixy logo there. That would be cool. I, I would consider doing that as well. And then also somebody's asking about the, uh, the Brixy sign, if that's going to make a comeback. It won't be a full wall again that just consumed a lot of two by four bricks, but I'd still have the Brixy sign. So that will be presented somewhere in the studio. Where exactly at this point? I don't know yet, uh, but it will for sure be there. And a logo is a great idea. In regards to the art, uh, somebody was worried about that. They said if it's uh, hanging too low, it's going to distract from the city. If it's too high, you can't really see it. You can view it from the second floor, but it might be too far away to see. Uh, I was planning on putting it up there because I don't know where else it's going to go. I don't want to take up an entire wall for the art because honestly, it's not my favorite thing anymore. The Lego art just really isn't my thing other than like the new Spider-Man one. So in my opinion, it's either put it up there or don't put it in there at all because I'm not looking to take up an entire wall where I could put four Billy cabinets and fill a way more sets in than these X amount of art sets. So it's there or not. And I guess when I get there, I can hang one hang two, hang three. If it looks like crap, take it down. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. I don't mean to sound negative when I'm responding to any of this stuff, but it's just like, I don't really know what it's gonna look like until we actually get in there. And I'm just like stating ideas as to how I would visualize it and where I should put this stuff to try and maximize the space. I know you're not gonna be able to see the art because it's eight feet in the air but I think art sets actually look good from afar like if I go eight feet away and hold an art set over there that's eight feet away you can see it pretty good even if I go to the end of the Lego room way over there you can see it pretty good you know like if you go in the, the access hole over there and you look at Darth Vader you're 20 feet away you can see it pretty good it does present good from afar uh, so my next questions are in regards to the clouds uh, so what I plan on doing is probably putting clouds around the uh, walls, like the the three walls. You got the city in the middle. I'm going to put clouds there. So there's a couple different ways. There's three different ways that I could do that. Uh, I could hire a mural artist and they could paint the clouds, but then it's permanent. It's on the walls. If you ever want to sell the place, you got to paint over the, the clouds. Another thing that I could do is uh, actually... 
get like huge wall decals or decals printed and put those on the walls. But then there's the application process, sort of permanent, might get some wrinkles in it, etc. So actually I was talking to my buddy Kevin, the brick building biker, he's the guy who came up with the decal idea and he's like, well, what we could do is print banners. And I was like, that is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna, I'm gonna print massive banners of clouds and those are gonna get hung tight, probably tacked at the bottom, ta uh, tacked at the top, and they're gonna get hung tight against all of the walls. And then the third wall where there's the big bay door will actually be on a curtain rod so you can actually move it and you can still access the bay door. That is the solution. Those are going to be natural looking real clouds. They're not going to be Lego clouds. I just think that Lego clouds, although it matches the Lego theme, will look a bit tacky and it's not going to give the vibe that I'm going for. But yeah, I'm thinking massive banners that are probably like eight feet high. I'll have to like take a, like when I'm in there with a camera, videotape, put some green tape on the walls at like six feet, eight feet, 10 feet, 12 feet, and see how high I have to go with the banners so that the backdrop is all the clouds. So I'll have to get in there and, and try that. That's how I'll come up with the sizing. sizing and uh, yeah, it's for sure gonna be banners. That's a brilliant idea. Kevin, the brick building biker is brilliant. In regards to the workspace, there's been a bunch of concern in regards to it being up on the mezzanine. And I agree, it sort of sucks, like, having to bring the builds down and having the parts up on the mezzanine sort of suck too. I, I agree that that sucks, like, I, I don't want to bring these big builds down. But the builds, you know... They're rock solid, they're on mills plates, they're pretty strong, it's just down a set of stairs. Not like it's a curved staircase or anything, it's just a straight shot down. Not that hard to go down 12 steps, with a, no matter how big the build is. I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue bringing the builds down the stairs. Having the parts up there is definitely a bit of concern if I'm working on the LEGO City and I need some gray brick, I gotta go up and get some gray brick, and then it's like, oh no, I need gray plate, gotta go up and get some gray plate. So I'm thinking that is for sure a concern, but I think there'll have to be some carts or tables on wheels downstairs too, so when I'm working on the Lego City, I can have this table on wheels and you can have parts all over it or part trays all over it. So when you go upstairs to get parts, you can bring a bunch of parts down and then they're just down there. Also, you could put some like, you could get some tables out of like drawer units and stuff in them. So you can have a selection of parts upstairs and downstairs. There is uh, like my Lego city plan, it only calculated 40 feet of the 60 feet. So there is another 20 feet down there that I left open because Maybe the parts are gonna have to go down there. Maybe the build station will have to go down there. I haven't quite decided yet, so things will change. Things always change based on how, you know, how efficient it is when I'm actually in there. I hope that I can set up a system where if I need a two by four brick, I don't have to go up and down stairs 80 times in a day. Like, I'm not gonna be doing that. I will make it work whether it's a table on wheels or a cart or whatever it may be, like a little swamper cart. So, okay, I'm building this mountain and I'm building it down here today, or I'm detailing this street and I need these 18 different parts. Okay, grab the 18 trays, set them up on the table down there, build whatever it is. At the end of the day, bring them back up and clean it so I'm not going up and down the stairs 50 times. That's, that's, that's what I would hope. Uh, I also mentioned that I was going to put uh, my parts on tables, cabinets underneath, some, and then I was gonna have a table on wheels and somebody brought up the concern about how are you gonna reach the parts? These are all modular, they're gonna come apart, they're gonna be the same height. It's not like I'm gonna take these massive towers and put them on the table so they're 80 feet in the, or 10 feet in the air. So those are gonna come apart. And then somebody else said, oh, well now you can't reach them because you're gonna have a table in front. You can't reach the parts. The tables are on wheels. Once again, I'm gonna try and resolve that when I'm there. Need to stop playing the devil's advocate. I'm 
gonna figure it out. I mean, I'm just talking about ideas. No need to poo-poo every single little tiny thing and pick apart every single little detail. It becomes a little bit exhausting because it's just the process of learning and I'm sure when I get in there it'll be fine I'll make it all work I'll be able to reach my parts it's it's not it's not a big deal we'll, we'll make it work and I'm not gonna go up and down the stairs 50 times believe me I don't want to do that I want to make it an efficient workplace that's the point of getting the bigger space so I know there's some concerns in regards to that but don't worry I'm 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 not looking to exhaust myself either, right? So we'll, uh, we'll try and make it work. Another reason that I want my filming studio and all of the parts and all of my mess to be upstairs is because then it's gonna be clean, neat, and tidy. If I start bringing my parts downstairs and all of my half-built stuff and all of my half-built dioramas and all my projects on the go, then my main filming area of filming the Lego City and filming the shelving area becomes a mess. And I want my mess, I want Rixie's mess to be isolated above on the mezzanine. I don't want it to be below sort of clouding everything. My plan for the studio space where the tables are and where the shelving is, is to have it neat and tidy and clean at all times and nothing on the floor, like nothing on the floor. And I'm gonna have robotic vacuums going through there constantly cleaning it up to, elim to eliminate all of the dust. And I want my mess and my hoard to be out of the way, upstairs. So there's been a bunch of questions in regards to the table layout as well. Um, I did make it one big rectangle and I had it so that the big tables were sort of connected by smaller tables, very similar to this one here. And I did say that you'd have to crawl underneath to access the tables. Uh, so there has been a lot of people suggesting that I put all these tables on wheels. And I don't know if I'm gonna do that. There's been a lot of people telling me to do that. and. I just truly don't know if I'm gonna do that because the reality is, is once I get all this stuff placed here, the stuff, this Lego is pretty much all locked together. So I don't know how often I will be unlocking it and moving the tables. I, I don't know the benefit of putting it on wheels. I don't know if it outweighs, you know, like the work and just the energy as to figuring out how to put all of this bench work on wheels. I don't know if it will be worth it in the end because the Lego is going to be locked together on top of it in the end anyway. So I, I, I don't know if the tables are going to be on wheels. I'm not sure. I understand that ergonomics is, is, uh, is a very important thing and, and uh, I should put it on wheels, I guess, but I, I just... If these were on wheels, I don't know how often I would be wheeling them around. I, I, I truly don't. So I'm, I'm not sure if I'm gonna build them on wheels once again. I, I really don't know if that's gonna happen. I know a lot of people want me to do it, but I, I truly don't know if I'm gonna do that. Uh, table size, so there's been a bunch of concerns in regards to table size because when I originally uh, presented the table layout, on Excel, I mentioned that base plates are 10 inches by 10 inches. And when I made these tables, I made them in a 10 inch dimension, which I know was a mistake because a base plate is 10.079 inches. And believe me, I remember that. And when I get around to actually creating the bench work and creating the tabletops, I will be building them exact size using millimeters so that they are the exact size of base plates. Believe me, I am not gonna make that mistake again. I, it's not like I forgot that. But when I originally presented the plans, I wanted to use 10 inch by 10 inch dimensions because it's so much easier to present and visualize with you on a camera. If I were to go on about, oh, you know, uh, 20 base plates is, however 200 and 200 inches or whatever however many millimeters it's this many millimeters and that many millimeters and start rambling on about exact measurements in millimeters i think it would become exhausting to watch so that's why i decided to go with the 10 inch by 10 inch base plate because it's a lot easier to present to you than a 10.079 inch base plate 
That's why I did that. It's not that I forgot. It's just easier to present. I can't stress that enough. I will not be doing that again. I will not be making that mis mistake again. Uh, there's been some concerns in regards to uh, this, the layout, uh, how I'm going to reach the ceiling when the tables are made, uh, how I'm going to fill the inlets. There's been a lot of concern about everything, and, and I get it. I get it. Everyone's concerned about a lot of things, but just note that I'm going to figure it out. There should be... E-shaped tables, how many tables are you going to build, how are you going to fill these tables, you're going to run out of space. Uh, when you put all this new stuff back in, you're already out of space. All of these different concerns. I mean, if I'm going to run out of space in that place, then I have a serious issue. The space is pretty much for Lego City, three times as large as what I have down here. If I fill that space, then I better start liquidating some of my Lego getting rid of some sets and, and coming up with different ideas because that is outrageous. I will never fill this space. This is the end game. Um, my plan for the tables is to build uh, as many tables as I need to build my layout and then expand from there. I don't know if I'm going to build all of my bench work immediately. I, I, I don't know because then it's going to look like really empty and trying to fill that space will be fun though so I, i'm thinking maybe i should build all the bench work immediately yeah and there are some concerns about the elevation as well saying people people are saying that i should build all the tables at different heights but the reason i want to build them all at the same height is so that i can do my subway idea i'm very passionate about the subway i want the subway to work because it's another way to add another layer and to present trains in a very cool way. So all of the tables, all of the bench work will be pretty much exactly like this. The subway will be built into it. If I start messing around with different heights, it's not gonna allow me to do my subway idea, so that's why I'm not gonna do it that way. I'm gonna keep it at all at the same height, and then I'm gonna put my elevated platforms on top of the same height. But with that said, this base level isn't gonna be as tall as it currently is. I'm probably gonna come down a little bit. It's gonna make it easier for me to reach because it's not as tall up or high up so I can actually reach further. I can have my subway going around and then when I add these raised platforms on top because this is shorter, those aren't gonna be as tall so once again, it's gonna be easier for me to reach and such. So there's a couple questions about what we're gonna do with our basement here. I have answered this as well. I answered this on my other channel which is the Brixies. Uh, so TV, carpet, couch, I think this has actually changed. This is going to be like where our uh, our exercise bike goes, some exercise equipment where we're sitting right now. My film area is going to be way down there on the far end where the Star Wars nook is, where the AT-AT walker is. That's going to be where the uh, film area is. I'm hoping to put a two pool table in the large open space right there, and then the rest of the space is for the kids' play area. So just like a family zone. We got a nice couch, we got some TV, we got a little workout area. We got Brixie's little filming studio over there because there's actually a nook and I can repaint all those walls like where the big Brixie sign used to be and then I can have this table sitting there and I can say, yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back, it's Jordan here. Today we're gonna be taking a look at the brand new Lego Star Wars Death Star and I can still film and build review, or sorry, I can build Lego here and film reviews here so I can actually still spend some time at home with the family. Plus the uh, desk upstairs will still be here with the computer so I can edit videos from home as well. So I know there is a ton of concern and I appreciate it. Just note that I read these comments, I know, I hear your concerns. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that I don't get robbed, that I have enough space to display all the Lego that the LEGO City is presentable and accessible and ergonomical to work on. And the place is dust free and the bills are paid and the, uh, the studio is warm or cool or whatever it may be. I'm just gonna make sure that this place is the best that it possibly can be, just like I've done down here. And things will change, I will adapt. Uh, Part locations might change, tables might change, set locations might change, 
the Lego City layout might change. Maybe the real, maybe there will be wheels on the tables. Maybe there will be all of these different things. And I will definitely do my best to try and make it work. And I have concerns. And I read your concerns. And believe me, I think about this day and night. I have been planning this for years, for, for years. And I will say that the studio space that I've been able to obtain is better than any of the previous studio spaces that I've ever seen for like that I've looked at personally like what I mean is like the commercial properties that I've been looking at for the past two years because I've actually been researching commercial properties for two years probably more this is the best most suiting one that I have seen for this operation and I cannot wait to show you I hope I addressed your concerns. I'm sorry if I got a little bit ramped up during some of those, but you've got to put it in my perspective. I, I read hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these comments that sometimes play the devil's advocate. I don't want to hear about my place getting robbed or my place flooding or leaks coming in through the ceiling or whatever it may be. I don't want to hear that because I'm banking on that not happening, but if it does happen, then... We're going to roll with the punches, baby. We're going to make it happen, right? We're, just, we're going to fix the problem. Let's just fix the problem and move on. Just like anything in life. That's all you can do is put a smile on and, and, try, and uh, try and make it work. And that's what I'm going to do in this new, new studio space. If you think I missed anything, now that you've listened to everything that I've had to say here, please fire down in the comment section. And remember to have yourselves a fantastic day. Thank you so much. Please remember to like, subscribe as well. Farewell.